All right, this will be a simple one. Uh, we have a bunch of resistors. One, two, three, four, five, six resistors. And I've got a voltage going through them. So I've got 10 volts going through it. And we're gonna come along and we're gonna measure the voltages at these different nodes. Now this is what's called a voltage divider. And so we have one, two, three, four, five, six. We should get half of it in the middle. And if we go here, we've got two on this side and four on this side, we should get uh, uh, two thirds of the voltage. And here we should get one third of the voltage. So if we have 10 volts going in, we should measure five volts here. We should measure 3.333333 volts here and 6.66666 volts here. All right, so let's do that. Uh, let me move the camera. Okay, so I'm gonna take the uh, string of resistors and let me put a weight on them here. So they're just kind of hanging there. Is that okay on the camera? I think that's okay. So this is a string, maybe they're a little bit off, a little string of resistors here, making them worse, making it worse. Don't touch it. Okay, <laughs> making it worse. Ah! Making it a lot worse. All right, is that better? Probably not. Anyway, we have a string of resistors. Live with it. <laughs> um, so let's uh, measure them. Uh, we'll measure them with the two different voltmeters. So let's measure them first with the uh, with the Keithley. I've showed this before. These two these two voltmeters match really, 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 really close. So let's go here. We'll measure the ten volts. Make sure it's ten volts. There we go. Ten point zero zero one. Right, and up here we've got 10.001, right? They match really, really good. Okay, so uh, what did we say? We'll say in the middle it should get five volts. So let's measure in the middle. Five volts, 5.01, right? The resistors aren't perfect, 5.01. And I said we would get 6.6666 here, 6.668, and here we would get 3.3333, 3.347. Okay, great. All right, so let's repeat the measurement with this one. Uh, everything's getting in my way again. All right, let's go here in the middle. Uh, uh, what happened? We should measure five volts, but we get 4.19. That's weird. Did we get 6.66? No, we get 5.7. And how about down here? We get, instead of 3.333, we get 2.8. So how could that possibly be? What, what could possibly be going on here? These two meters are really, really accurate. They go really, really good together. Let's check that 10 volts again. Yeah, see, 10 volts. So why does one measure correctly and why does the other one not measure correctly? Well, it has to do with input impedance. So every, every meter has input impedance. So right now, this meter is defaulting to its high impedance mode. So its input impedance is something around greater than 30, 30 gig ohms or something like that. And uh, the HP meter defaults to 10 mega ohms. And so 10 mega ohms. So how big are these resistors? Well, they're 1.3 mega ohm resistors. So 1.3, 1.3, 1.3, right? So there's, there's quite a bit of resistance here. And when we try to measure the middle point, we're actually loading down part of the chain with 10 mega ohms. So we actually have, in addition to uh, 1.3, 1.3, 1.3, in parallel with that, we have 10 mega ohms. So we have uh, 3.9 in parallel with 10, and it upsets our reading. Now we can change that on the HP. We can go into the menu system, go into the measurements, and we can, we can change the input resistance. Um, and right now we have it set to 10 mega ohm in input impedance, but we can check change that to greater than 10 gig ohms. And so we'll enter that. And now we measure five volts. So now everything's fine again. We measure five volts here, 6.6 .6 here, and 3.3 .3 here, okay? So you need to be aware of that when you're measuring high impedance uh, circuits. The, the measurement can actually affect what you're trying to measure. And it, it, it reminded me of my Keithley 619 that has greater than 20 tera ohms input. It's very good at not disturbing the circuit, but even a simple thing like this, which you, you might actually run across someday, is that you're, oops, you're suddenly measuring things wrong, okay? So let's go ahead and, and let's redo this experiment with something that you might have. So let's 
use our trusty uh, somebody pronounced it correctly um, there's a channel that's the guy's a native Chinese speaker and he pronounced it and I still couldn't catch it, it was something like Ang 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 I don't know he pronounced it really strange I couldn't I couldn't follow it so let's see if we got 10 volts we do is that showing up in camera no, move it up a little bit here and let's put it on stand so you can read the numbers better yeah that's better if i stay out of the out of the camera yeah that's good all right so 10 volts and then let's go to the middle again and it's got that same problem see it has 10 mega 10 mega ohm input also right so uh, most of the meters do most of the meters have these uh, 10 mega ohm inputs so you have to be really really careful it's a it's a pretty fancy meter that has anything greater than 10 mega ohms um, sometimes on the millivolt scale, I think on this one on the millivolt scale, then the megohms are into the gigohm range or something like that. I don't remember on, on this meter. Uh, I know that's true on the uh, on the uh, uh, the UT61E. I believe on the millivolt scale it has quite a quite a large input resistance, but but not on the volt scale. Um, so yeah, you have to be have to be careful of that. So anyway. Just a quick heads up, if you ever get yourself into measuring high impedance things and the numbers don't make any sense, it's because you're loading down the circuit. You've got that 10 mega ohms and you're loading down the circuits and you need to find some other way of doing that. I've had comments of viewers before who like me to sometimes draw things. Some people are very visual learners. Um, I'm a very visual learner, so um, when I say things in words, sometimes it's what sometimes it doesn't make sense. But uh, let me draw this circuit that might help somebody else learn it. Um, so we have 10 volts in the ground, and we're we're trying to measure the center here, and we have 1.3 mega ohm resistors. So these are all 1.3 mega ohm resistors. So um, we have uh, three. So from here, from here down. We have uh, 3.9 mega ohms, and from here up we have 3.9 mega ohms, right? And so we're right in the middle. So of course we're going to measure five volts. But if we come in with a voltmeter, okay? So here's our voltmeter, and we connect it to ground, and we connect it to uh, we connect it to the middle point. Inside of the voltmeter is some resistance. Okay, that's the internal resistance of the meter, and it's 10 mega ohms, right? So now we have uh, 3.9 mega ohms in parallel with 10 mega ohms, right? And that actually is, we can calculate that. What did I do with my calculator? Hmm. Okay, so we got uh, 3.9, uh, 1 over, we have 10, 1 over, add those and do 1 over. We actually now have, instead of uh, 3.9, it's actually now 2.8 mega ohms. Okay, so the difference between uh, that is that we're going to be measuring too low, right? We're going to have uh, higher resistance on the top and lower resistance on the bottom. It's 2.8 mega ohms and a 3.9 mega ohms. So our voltage should be lower than 5 volts, and it is. We're measuring, uh, we're measuring uh, 4.2. And so that's why you've got this extra 10 mega ohms in here. Now, like I said, on the... Uh, on the HP, you can make this uh, greater than 10 gig ohms. And I think the Keithley is good. There's something like 30 gig ohms. And uh, the Keithley 619 is 20 tera ohms. <laughs> so much, much better. A quick update on Inside Dog. He's been waiting to get that cone off so he can go outside to test out his new GPS receiver. Of course, he has to do the smell test to make sure everything's okay. He's quite pleased. He's received 12 satellites and uh, it's giving him a good, accurate reading now.